Hello friends, Jermaine here and welcome to this video. In today's package of the week, we'll be looking at the Redux package. Redux is a state management solution for web and also Flutter based projects. It's based on the JavaScript equivalent Redux.js. So we're going to be going through the example here and we're going to be making some tweaks to it. To install Redux, open your pubspec.yaml file and then add an entry for Redux under the dependencies key. I've also generated these files by using stagehand and then I've run this web dev serve command here which is what has now started a web server serving from the web directory so if we go to the browser this is what we currently get so for us to use redux I'm gonna go to my main.dart file and then in here let's import the redux package so the way redux works is we create a store object and this store object will hold metadata related to our application so this metadata would hold some sort of stateful um, information so let's start by creating a store and we are going to be storing an integer and then this store takes in and this store takes in some arguments one of them is what's known as a reducer a reducer is a function that we use to tell the Redux store how to update its state. So I'll create one here called counter reducer. This reducer contains the state and also it contains what's known as an action. I'll get to that in a second. For now, I'll just return state and then we'll pass that in here. And we need to mark this as returning an integer. In fact, let's move this out of the main function. So I'll place that here. Okay, next our store also takes an initial state. So because we've marked it as an integer, we'll pass the number zero. And then next we need to connect our store to what gets rendered out in our UI. So the way we can do that is right after here in our UI, we can just do store.state. So state will return the latest value in our store. So if I save this and I go to the browser, yeah, we get your dial tap is running and we get the number zero, which is our initial value. Okay, so let's look at how we can update our store state. And to help us do that, I'll come to our index.html file and then right after output, I'm going to put two buttons. So one will be an increment and the other will be a decrement button. Okay, so I'll save that. Okay, so that gives us that. Let's center it in the CSS okay and i'll just sort the order of this so what we want to do is when we click these buttons so if i click the plus we want this to increase if i click the minus we want it to decrease we need to essentially dispatch what is known as an action this action contains a description of the interaction that's taking place and also it gives an indication to the reducer on how we expect our state to be updated so to do that we'll create an action we create an enum with actions and we just want two values so increment and the decrement and then we will define two click events so one click event is for our increment button so when we click on this button we want to dispatch an action to our store and this action would be our increment action and we'll do the same for our decrement button so when we click on decrement we will dispatch a decrement event to our store which means that these actions gets passed to our counter reducer function and then based on the value of that action we use that to affect our state in some way shape or form so in this example it will just be if action is equal to actions dot increment then we'll take the current state value and we'll add one to it or else we'll take the current state value and we'll subtract one from it so once that is completed we'll just return the updated value of state let's also print this out and let's go to our browser okay so if i click plus you see our state value getting updated and when i hit minus the value reduces and so on and so forth so the update is working next we need to update what is being rendered here including the incremented number because currently it's not doing that reason why it's not doing that is because this 
this statement runs only once so i'm going to cut this out and then we'll do store dot unchange and then we'll listen for it this unchange event contains the updated state value and that means i can paste what i cut off here and we can do updated state so let's try this okay so if i hit plus we get the updated state value when i hit minus the ui gets updated including the current value in our state all right what happens when i reload the page yeah we see nothing gets rendered over there because the only because the rendering only happens when the store is updated so i'll cut this one out over here in a render function this returns void and then we can pass render here on page load we need to run the render function with the current value from our store so that's our initial state so if i save this and i reload the page we get the updated value and such okay so the next concept in redux that's worth covering is the concept of middleware so middleware are a series of functions that will get run between the time an event gets dispatched and when the store gets updated quick example of that define our middleware optional parameter which takes in a list of functions and one of the examples from the documentation is one of a login middleware so let's define that now we get a couple of arguments what we can do here is we can just print out a timestamp and then the action does dispatch and then what we we'll normally do is we'll invoke the next function which includes the action that was dispatched so in this example this middleware will just log out a timestamp and it will just carry on to the next item in the middleware if any before finally it goes to the reducer so let's check this out so if i hit plus you see this now logged out to the console and then the reducer gets invoked and then we've updated our store with this new value which was printed from here so i'll just comment this out okay so we've got our first login middleware why don't we go ahead and create another one and before we go ahead and create our second middleware let's look at the use case for that so i'll come back here to the browser and you see that as i as i amend the store and then i refresh we lose that value it gets reset back to zero so why don't we create another middleware that will persist our value to local storage and then when the page reloads we'll retrieve that value from local storage let's go back to the code i'll create another middleware function i'll call it persistence middleware and in this middleware function we'll just do window dot local storage to access local storage and we want to create the counter value key and the value of that will be essentially our our stores state and we need to set that as string so let's save this and then we'll register that over here and then we need to invoke the next function okay and so when i click that you see this see our local storage value updating but currently it's persisting the previous value because if you remember this is happening in our middleware and the middleware functions run before the action gets passed into the reducer which updates the state so this is essentially the value that gets passed into the reducer to produce the value 10 so that's not what we want we essentially want to invoke our counter reducer function and then we'll give it the action and then we'll convert the value to string okay if i clear localhost and try this again and now you see that numbers match okay so next let's update our logic so that once we refresh the page we'll just pull in the value from localhost and we can do that over here so on page load we will retrieve our counter value from local storage and then for our initial state if it exists then we can pass that value to an integer or else we'll just set our initial state to zero so if i reload 
it's pulling in the value from local storage local storage is cleared now reload now becomes zero let's try that again yep all right that's good as well as setting integers and other primitive values as the initial state for our store we can also set objects as values for our store and be able to update those so i'll create a class called app state and then um, i'll make this a const constructor and this will have our counter value so you can imagine this app state having various other bits of information not just a counter value could have another property in here but for this example i'll just set it as such and then we can say for our initial state we'll create an instance of app state that will pass that value from our local storage or else we just create a new app state object as such and pass in the number zero and then we need to set this type correctly which now means that we need to update our reducer function because it's returning app state also that will become app state and then in here we'll return an app state and then over here we'll return app state state dot counter value minus one and then over here we need to set the right type and then in our render function we also need to set this as app state and here we'll say state dot counter value so if i test this out in the browser should still it's not performing the same because we've got instance of app state which is because in our persistence middleware i need to do counter value dot to string okay let's try this again okay we're still getting instance of app state dot up okay i am going to create a variable here then we'll run our counter reducer function and then from state we will retrieve the current counter value and then we'll convert that to string let's see what that does i'll clear localhost and let's reload the page okay there we go and everything is updating as expected okay so i'm going to end the video here if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up if you are not a subscriber hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell notification icon next to the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any updates if you've got any questions let me know down below if you are new to the Dart language, check out the Get Started with Dart video and ebook bundle that I put together. If you are looking to upskill yourself in some more premium tutorials, consider becoming a patron. I'd really appreciate the support and I'll see you in the next video.